Hello everyone and welcome back to Divine Journey 2. So last episode we spent so many resources crafting and we also built some more empowerers. Wow, that was all in sync actually. <laughs> Between episodes I've been working on this new setup here, which sits next to our treated wood automations, and this is for hardened iridium glass. So we have four pulverizers for obsidian, four for pulverized lead, which are combined into hardened glass, and then induction smelted with pulverized iridium to give us the iridium glass. This also gives us a rich slag byproduct, which we store here. And this hardened glass is used in all of these empty cores. And the empty cores are used in all of the uh, content tweaker blood magic cores, as well as pretty much all of the singularities and the plasma cores used in draconic cores. So we go through like hundreds of those things per hour. But that should be robust enough to see us through to the end of the pack. Last episode, we were also dealing with the issue of running out of some V crystals. However, it was pointed out that you could actually use any type of V crystal for all of these distillery crafts. So I've switched out the Diabolus that used to be here with uh, Perdito and Aqua, which is two of the primary ones. And the six primary V crystals, we have almost 100k of each. So yeah, these are going to be fine. And as for the inserts, we're now inserting via limited item filler and item conduit from the interface back here, instead of using the pull function from the impulse hopper. Although it seems that we need to reverse the order of these things. There we go. So to start us off today, I'm not sure exactly when this video will be out, but we're currently on 637 hours played time. Let's see where we are by the end of this video. And I'm not going to release this until we have the Neutron Collector. <laughs> so we started laying out the craft for this last episode, and we're missing one item here. And the item we're missing is the Creative Mill, which requires the Creative Dank Null. And the things we're missing for the Dank Null is two Essences of Enlargement, and two creative storage upgrades, which we need one more condenser Mark II, or no, three more condenser Mark IIs. We managed to get one of these last episode, and we have a Mark I sitting here as well. So yeah, right now we have the Essences of Enlargement crafting up, and I think it might be another couple of hours before the next clip. <laughs> I'm gonna just continue doing a bunch of crafting here. There isn't really a whole lot for us to do other than move the Watch of Flow in time and actually get all these things crafted. So yeah, I guess I'll be back when there's some more progress to report on. Alright, we have some bad news. What I thought was going to be a productive night of making all of these essences from blood magic turned out to be not so fruitful actually. <laughs> so I logged in and we were on zero tenebrae. And the reason for that is because this drawer of cobblestone actually hit zero. And to make tenebrae we do actually need crepitus. And crepitus takes double compressed cobblestone per piece. So that's 81 cobblestone per piece of tenebrae effectively. So I've had to build us this new cobblestone generator. This is eight transfer nodes, more or less fully upgraded. We get our double compressed around every second or so, although of course it is being consumed right now. And there's also more bad news. <laughs> so we have, it turns out that we've actually run out of evil craft blood as well, that we are farming from these guys. I'm not sure how many of you will remember this setup, but we've had troubles with this before. And this black hole tank was at like a couple million buckets anyway, and it's gone. And the thing we're mostly using this for is actually blood infused leather. Yeah, you can see it slowly trickling in here whenever we have blood. But that's not going to do this, because the blood infused leather is used for star leather, is used for draconic cores. So, yeah, that's not going to work. <laughs> so I've actually repurposed our second crafting blood altar here, to make our blood infused leather in here instead. This does mean that we can't produce slates or hardened blood droplets at the same time, but we do have quite a big backlog of these to work with. And this leather does cost 8,000 each, uh, but we have a huge capacity altar here, and we can do stacks at a time, actually. On a positive note, though, I did actually finish up most of the base around the outsides. I got like all the terraforming done around here. There's no more like floaty parts here. <laughs> so I went all the way around the base and put walls on some of the wiring areas. It's hard to really remember exactly what- oh, we're missing a block right there. And I should fix that TNT hole as well. <laughs> that seems like it's gotten larger maybe. I don't remember it being that big. But yeah, everything except for this particular side of the base, we have all finished off now. I also was able to craft up another alchemical chest for the energy condensers and also two Essences of Enlargement. And we can ultimate craft these into our next quest of the day, the Essence of Enlargement. Nice, so these Essences are going to be used for our Dank Null, and we now have everything except for the Creative Storage Upgrades. And you may be wondering why we didn't just craft a RF Tools Dimension for this blood. That was my original thought, and I did actually craft up the Liquid Absorber for this. However, it was pointed out by some of you guys on Discord, thank you by the way for this, when this Evilcraft blood is in world, it does actually harden into blocks. 
And if you craft the whole dimension of this thing, the server is not going to be very happy. <laughs> so I, I really don't want to take the chance with that. <laughs> That's not a solution for us. So we have a spare liquid absorber here, but I'm sure we may use it. Anyways, a quick update on the playtime. We're on 640 right now. And we can almost craft up our next alchemical chest. We're missing some magic tallow. I'll, go, I'll have to go and investigate that thing. But yeah, more bottlenecks to fix. Looks like we've got an issue with Fabrico here. Yeah, this is already fully upgraded. I'm going to have to do something about this. Maybe we'll add a second smeltery for this. Ah, so this is nothing the Watch of Flow and Time can fix. At least temporarily. And we added in some more Essentia storage for Fabrico. But I have also hooked up this jar, which is the Void Upgrade jar for Bestia. And this import bus just loops around the bottom and connects up to this subnet here for Fabrico. So that also helps with the production, but I was wondering where all this tallow was actually going. And it turns out that since we built this cobblestone generator, all these transfer nodes take GP to run. And the tallow that we throw into these cauldrons does actually rely on us having GP to be able to refill with the user with this bucket. So this thing broke. <laughs> oh, so many things breaking. But we can very easily add some more dragon egg mills down here. So we're up to 3000 grid power. So yeah, we put out one fire and another one arises. <laughs> Alright, so time is 6.45 hours played, and I've been doing a lot more troubleshooting. Um, I've also been working on a little bit of a secret project. But first of all, I have made a few changes to our alchemy tables here. So I've basically done a full rewire of these alchemy tables. Before, these impulse hoppers used to be where the conduits were, and we were using the push function on these things. But since we have to insert into the side of the alchemy table, I've put a one block space in between here. And we're using separate channels to export from the impulse hoppers. And each group of five impulse hoppers is actually separated out now. But all of the outputs are still connected up, which go into the drawer controllers here. One other thing I did notice is that we were once again out of mana dust. There seems to be a lot of the same issues cropping up here. Oh, and also bronze dust uh, for simple catalysts. Bronze blend. We just need so much of this stuff. <laughs> so I've basically passive it again and we have new crafter set up for all the thermal dusts and we now have four crushing factories for bronze blend i don't know if i've shown this before but i did also add crushed lapis i noticed we weren't getting any industrial dye blend but those are for machine frames they're not used quite as much these days something that was used up though is our tin and iron ore especially tin ore actually so i've added two more crafters for these which take some of our mystical agriculture essence and the tin essence were actually out of, unfortunately. <laughs> so I went and leveled the seeds to 10, 10, 10 for that thing. As most of our seeds are actually still 1, 1, 1, apart from the most important ones. But anyways, all of that iron ore and tin ore is used in the mechanism ore processing setup for all of these clumps, uh, shards, and crystals. And yeah, we've got the watch of flow and time here just to speed this up because we need thousands of these things. All of these clumps are used in the uh, alchemy table catalysts. So yeah, blood magic is uh, not playing nice with us today. <laughs> There's been a lot of uh, blood magic things happening. But yeah, there is many, many other optimizations, and too many to list, to be honest. However, I did want to come back to craft up the next energy condenser Mark II, which is two of four. Still two more to craft. However, we can pick up the second energy condenser, which incidentally will give us enough for the creative storage upgrades. So we can make two of these things now, but we do need two creative dank nulls. 
So technically we can actually make the Neutron Collector, but this quest here does require the two Dank Nulls. Or maybe it's the Creative Mills. Requires eight, and we get four per craft. So I don't really want to move on before completing this quest. <laughs> Even though it is a bug, and uh, the devs told me that it will be changed in the next patch. I just don't know when that will be, and uh, yeah, no cheating here. <laughs> so we're going to do it the way it is, and we're going to make four of these things. But anyways, you may have also noticed this dream dirt and stone in my inventory from the Vethia dimension. And I've actually been using this for our tin ore, as both these items have EMC, so I've just been swapping them out with this energy condenser. But now that we have a second one, we can actually fill one with dream stone, and the other one with dream dirt, and then conduit it into a crafter, which turns it into the tin ore, and then stores it in this drawer with a storage bus on there. And again, all of this setup is just temporary. It's just going to last for basically one night. But yeah, crafting up that second energy condenser has basically run us dry of all the resources. So yeah, <laughs> I'm just crafting what we can, which is singularities at the moment. This is pretty much the only thing we can afford. And we've also got some flying ointment going as well. But yeah, I suspect it'll be another few hours before the next clip. And I'm going to try to do my best to get the next condensers. So yeah, wish me luck. <laughs> Alright, so we're on day 3, 645 hours, and in this chest, I believe there's enough for another 4 alchemical chests. But there we have it, our next 4 alchemical chests. So with those alchemical chests, we have to make 2 more energy condensers. It always makes me nervous hitting this <laughs> crafting screen like this. We're missing something different usually every time. But this time it looks like it is... fishing controllers. Well, that's nothing new, but <laughs> we should be able to craft those things. Let's request 2 of those. But there's actually not a whole lot changed. I mean, things seem to be working relatively smooth nowadays. I did, however, notice that we are almost out of gunpowder. And gunpowder is an EMCable item. But just to save us dedicating resources, we're just going to make a powered spawner for these. And break our anvil. And we're now once again farming creepers. And so while we're waiting on those fishing controllers, I was working on some building while I've been doing all this crafting. And as promised, we have a portal room. <laughs> So yeah, I moved some of the portals around, but mostly they're all still in their original locations. We got the Nether, the Deep Dark, the Autumn Dimension, Twilight Forest, what is this one? Erebus, Aether, I forgot what this one is, Isica maybe? I think I think that's Isica. So yeah, at this point we really don't need this, we have access to dislocators and things. But I did promise we would build a portal room, and uh, well, here it is. <laughs> Give me something to work towards uh, while I was waiting on all the resources building up. And I went ahead and touched up some other areas of the base as well. A lot of these parts are all finished up for the end of the series, although there is still quite a ways to go before we can get everything. But yeah, everything actually connects up quite nicely now. Oh, and for the gunpowder, I guess we can also put some extract speeds on this. That will uh, help speed up the crafter. I've been doing this quite a lot to a lot of these uh, different crafters here. And I've also increased the buffers on many of these drawers so that we store more of the ingots, especially as we're making more singularities these days. Anyways, I think that's our fishing controllers finished off. That was actually a relatively quick craft now that we have a lot of more things on passive. And can we request two more energy condensers? Four million bytes, let's do it. We'll still have to do this craft another two times to get the Mark IIs. But we do have two already, so let's actually see about creating our first two creative storage upgrades for this quest. It does mean we'll have to give up these two energy condensers which we're using right now. Or we're using right now. <laughs> actually, you know what, let's top up our... Uh, Demon Lord ingots, because I think we're almost out of mob grindium. Yeah, let's fill our drawer with Demon Lords, just so that we have this for later. But yeah, it feels good to almost be getting somewhere. I feel like I've been crafting these chests for three days straight, more or less. <laughs> and we've almost made no progress at all. When you guys get to this point in the pack, 100% make sure you have Blood Magic automated. And uh, don't forget about Bewitchment either. <laughs> I think we had also run out of Cryothium Dust earlier on. I just want to make sure that it's refilling its buffer again. Yeah, there's so many things to keep track of now. <laughs> okay, Bronze Blend seems to have fixed though. Okay, that's going to be enough Demon Lord for now. We're just about to get another two Mark 1 condensers, so we can easily replace these with the Mark 1s again. Alright, so let's put these inside our ME system. And we're going to use these to craft our storage upgrade. Oh yeah, I did also craft the rest of the creative modifiers we need. I think though we do still need two more creative bookshelves. Uh, but we do have one corruption core, we need one more of these things. Anyways, let's request our two creative storage upgrades to get our quest. Do we want to give these up right now? Mm, 
Okay then, I can't wait any longer. <laughs> Let's do it. Oh yeah, infinite items. And we get the most epic quest reward, 16 red matter. <laughs> Not. Alright, so this opens up a couple more quests up here for us. And these pouches up here, I believe, actually require another creative storage upgrade, which is another condenser. But this is for after, right? <laughs> we need this for a creative chest, but that's going to be a while before we can get that. Anyways, onto our creative dank null, which we have the recipe for. And I did craft up the rest of the emerald dank nulls, so I think we can request this. We have our two essences of enlargement for the next craft as well. And this opens up our creative mill, which we need eight for, yeah. And I don't really want to mess with the NBT data on this dank null, so we're going to put this back. <laughs> I don't want any mistakes at this point in the game. But yeah, that was only a small moment of excitement. We've still got a ways to go before we can get this neutron collector. And I think this craft is going to take probably about an hour to finish. Yeah, there's still a lot scheduled. 134 flying ointment. These things probably take the longest, along with all this alchemistry stuff as well. Alright, so around an hour and a half actually for this craft, it looks like we're just waiting on the last stabilizer core. This time while I was waiting on the craft, I did actually go back to Arcana, as I was looking at some of the upcoming quests, and I noticed that we were out of dungeon tokens, which we can only get from the boss there. Uh, these are used for lightning charges, which we're going to be using in the future for energy cells, and these are part of some of the creative crafts, like the creative capacitor, and we need it for the energy cell, and there's more if we keep going, <laughs> like the energy source, the RF source, Creative drum, creative tank, so yeah, we need quite a, quite a lot of those things. I uh, also encoded a bunch of recipes for the jetpack, actually, and also the solars. I didn't craft any of these, but yeah, we have all the recipes encoded. Just because I knew that would take a while with the NBT data issues you get with these things. Is this thing done crafting? It is. We have two more energy condensers. Awesome. One step closer to this <laughs> insane goal of today. And now we have to make two Mark IIs. I'm just cute. I don't think we can get this, to be honest. There's no way we have enough resources built up. Uh, 3 million bytes? What are we missing? Wait a second. Oh, it's two condensers. Oh, no. <laughs> I forgot there was two. But I thought it was a one-to-one -one upgrade from the from the Mark 1 to the Mark 2. Okay, well, that's another, what, two alchemical chests on top of this? More zinc oxide. I think we're missing re recipes for some of those. Most of the other stuff we have, though. Osgo glass, huh? And two more fishing controllers. <laughs> okay, this might take another full day to get, actually. We'll see. The Osgo glass though we can fix with these condensers. I believe this does have EMC. Yeah, Osgo glass does have EMC. Let's fix this. <laughs> Alright, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to actually make another watch of flow in time. I've toyed with this idea for uh, quite a while. I didn't think it was worth it at first. But actually, after double checking the recipe, I don't think it's going to be that bad. I mean, we're going to make up the resources and more. We are missing more compressed carbon. <laughs> okay, vitreous. Some blue fire stones have EMC, dark matter blocks we don't have a recipe for, and the celestial manipulator. I guess the celestial manipulator is separate since we have them in packages. Can we make this? Okay, well, what are we missing for the manipulator? Uh, more vitreous. I wonder what that's being used for, actually. Oh, is it the crystal cores, maybe? Yeah, it's all these crystal cores need condensed vitreous, which has to specifically be this. Well, we can create a couple of stacks with quartz slivers, if we can find it here. <laughs> there it is. Okay, we're going to fill a chest worth of this stuff. Alright, now we can request the next Celestial Manipulator. Which is actually the bulk of the cost in this Watch of Flown Time, as it takes a penultimate machine frame, uh, four Corrupted Dragon Cores, which is a Chaotic Core each, and four Celestial Crystal Cores. The upgrade process isn't even half as bad as that, actually. <laughs> the Neodymium we can get quite easily. Yeah, the other option I was considering here to speed up our time in crafting these condensers is actually doubling our Blood Magic setup. As in, probably building two more altars and a handful more alchemy tables. I'm not really sure which one would be best, to be honest. I think the Watch of Flow and Time, though, is going to help us. It means that we can keep one here to permanently generate maximum amount of LP, and we can have the other ones next to our alchemy tables here. As this crafting speed is not ideal. <laughs> but when we have the watch here, we, uh, we can't sustain the amount of LP it costs. But yeah, once again, this is going to take a little bit to craft. <laughs> and I'll be back, hopefully, with another Watch of Flow and Time. 
Alright, one more manipulator. Can we request our watch? Rainbow tablets. Oh, I just went to get more of those. <laughs> I got like 300 and we seem to be out already. More vitreous as well. Alright, well, I guess we got a Mars trip to go to again. Okay, I get 20 minutes of Mars loot. Man, look at all the <laughs> look at all these dungeons I've looted. And we're back up to 168 rainbow tablets. Let's head home and try to craft this watch. And I think they were actually only missing this compressed carbon. And also more of this blue firestone. I got the dark matter blocks here as well. Oh yeah, we can craft this. Awesome. <laughs> Another long craft to go, 1 million bytes. Hopefully this is a worthwhile investment. Oh, something's been used. <laughs> we have to be quick with it. Hit start immediately. There we go. So I was double checking the recipe here and I noticed that it was trying to craft quite a lot of simple catalysts, which we don't seem to be making at the moment. And the reason for that is a lack of sugar. So we're going to add two more sag mills here. Of course, we're going to be using stellar capacitors for these. And we can round robin from a new interface here. And easily passive sugar. All oh, right, power. <laughs> power would help tremendously here. There we are. Oh, but these sag mills also give us clippings and trimmings. The reason I wanted to use the sag mill was because it's probably the fastest machine. I mean, I think we, yeah, we do technically get more from the squeezer, but this isn't nearly as fast as the sag mill can be. And just crafting from sugarcane only gives us one. But yeah, as for this clippings and trimmings, we can just bin this, I think. So we can just extract from the back of the machine and we'll filter the items into the trash can here. As for sugar canes though, uh, I think we do have quite a lot backlogged. I'm not sure if we're farming in our farm anymore. I think I might have took it out. Although I believe we do craft it in one of these crafters from Essence. Yeah, right here we have sugar cane. And it is also EMCable, so I guess I'll upgrade this. In fact, you know what? We can even farm it directly. I keep forgetting we can put vanilla plants in these crop sticks as well. I believe sugarcane can go in here. Okay, maybe not. <laughs> I'm lying. <laughs> okay, we'll just we'll buff up the Nature Essence version then. Maybe it has to be sand? Hey, there we go. <laughs> that works. Okay, so I guess we'll we'll level up a seed of this to 10, 10, 10. This probably has to be sand as well. Yeah. Oh, and I did also do a similar thing here for Inferno Bulbs, which is used for Incendium. Which seems to work quite well, actually. It just means that we don't have to dedicate any EMC towards this and use up our Void Metal for things like Sugarcane. Alright guys, time played is 6.48, and we have our Watch of the Flow in Time. The second one. <laughs> we may also build a third, but for now two is going to help us tremendously. Oh, and of course we'll need the pedestal as well. So yeah, this way it means that we can keep one on the zombies here to make sure that we have infinite essence. And I'm hoping that even with the second one on the tenebrae like this, we can keep up our life essence network. Mm, it's not looking good. <laughs> this looks like it's going down. Oh, that's not good. Maybe we can maybe we can make it work on the lower tier actually, like the magicalis, which is also used in the tenebrae. As these ones do cost 20,000 each. So maybe on some of the lower tiers it's going to work and we can still gain an LP. Yeah, that seems to have worked. It, we just can't have it on this one all the time. But anyways, I think with our second Watch of the Flow in Time there, we're going to call it an episode here. I did say at the beginning here that we would we would release this once we have the Neutron Collector. But things are just... Th I mean, things are just crazy. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we're on 648. What did we start this on? I think it was 637, 636. And lots of that time has been spent trying to finish up the building in the base. And most of it is done, it's just really this area here. Lots more troubleshooting as well. Uh, too much really to show. <laughs> I think I've been to Mars four times over the last two days. But yeah, definitely by next episode we're going to have this Neutron Collector. Which I'm told is going to be another around 25 or 26 hours, even with the watch, to get enough Neutronium for seeds. So yeah, I'm not entirely sure about the frequency of videos. <laughs> but... I mean, yeah, it's the way it goes when you're in the creative chapter. So yeah, thank you again for watching, and I'll see you all soon, hopefully soon, <laughs> for some more Divine Journey 2.